Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is John Pointer, and welcome to this very special episode of The Last Science Show. Today, we are going to be talking about potential energy, and we are even going to complete some potential energy problems. Let's dive right in. The term energy comes from the Greek word energia, meaning in or at work. Over the centuries, energy has come to mean many things to us. In physical science, energy means the ability to do work. Work means a change in temperature, speed, position, pressure, or form of matter, and is a direct result of energy applied within a system, a set of things or parts that are related. Therefore, energy is the capacity to use force to move an object over a distance or to cause change in matter. Energy is a quantity that can be measured. Energy is measured with the unit joule, J. Joule uh, units describe how much energy is needed for change within a system. Joule units measure energy just like meters measure distance. Degrees measure temperature and seconds measure time. Joule units can be understood as how much energy is needed for change within a system. The total energy in a system can be classified as potential or kinetic. Energy that is stored or waiting to happen is called potential energy. Energy in motion is kinetic energy. All types of energy can be categorized as one of these two basic types of energy. And we talked about kinetic energy in one of our other videos, so make sure you tap into that. But now we're talking about potential energy. Potential energy is energy that is stored. This energy has the potential to do work or transfer heat. Some forms of energy are stored in the bonds between atoms and molecules. Inside the nucleus of an atom, in a compressed or stretched object, or in the gravitational field between an object and Earth. Some examples of potential energy are chemical potential energy. Uh, sometimes potential energy is described as chemical potential energy because the energy is stored within the matter itself. Uh, the chemicals that make up food and fuel all contain potential energy. When you eat food, your body converts the foods from potential energy into kinetic energy, which you can use to move and function. When fuel is burned in a car engine, the fuel's potential energy is converted to kinetic energy that moves the car. Elastic potential energy. Sometimes potential energy is described as elastic potential energy because it is stretched or compressed within the object, such as with a stretched slingshot. Bro, that was super expensive. Ready? Wait, 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 wait. Two, three, up. one. Ooh. <laughs> or a compressed spring. For example, increasing the tension in a rubber band by pulling it tighter creates more elastic potential energy in the band. Gravitational potential energy. Objects have the potential 
to change their position due to the force of gravity pulling them down from a certain height. A child at the top of a slide has gravitational potential energy due to the force of gravity about to pull his or her body down the slide. Hey! Hey you! Are you ready? This type of potential energy depends on the height above the surface and the mass of the object. Ready? Ready? One, yeah. Two. Let's swing. <laughs> the higher the object and the greater the mass, the more potential energy an object will have. Nuclear potential energy. The energy stored in the nucleus of an atom is enormous. Nuclear power plants use a controlled release of this energy in the production of electrical energy. Very small amounts are released in nuclear medicine applications such as cancer treatment, or special diagnostic procedures. The nuclear power plant is a thermal power station, which generates electrical energy from heat, and it basically a factory for making lots of electricity, enough to power a city of around 2 million peoples. Electrical potential energy. Electrical potential energy is the potential energy that exists between two charges separated by region of space. When electricity gathers in one place, such as in static electricity, it has the potential to do something in the future. As you bring a st statically charged balloon closer to hair, the stored electrical potential energy is released as the hair is attracted to the balloon. Over the top of my daughter's hair, look what happens. As you can see, the balloon is making my daughter's hair stand on end. Electricity stored in a battery is an example of electrical potential energy. You can use the energy in the battery to power a flashlight. If you use more batteries in a series, you store more electrical potential energy to be released when you turn on the circuit. Energy has several properties. For one, energy is always conserved. It cannot be created or destroyed. It can, however, be transferred between objects or system, or from one form to another. Changing energy back and forth from one form or state to another is how we control it for our use. Kinetic energy can be transformed into potential energy. Potential energy uh, can be transformed into kinetic energy while still conserving the total energy of the system. When the system has more kinetic energy, it has less potential energy. When the system has less kinetic energy, it has more potential energy. At each moment, the systems Ke and Pe add up to the same value. Our two examples of energy transformation between kinetic energy and potential energy. Let's look at a roller coaster. A roller coaster system is an example of transforming energy. At the top of the hill, the roller coaster car has a maximum potential energy because the car is at its highest point above the ground. And minimum kinetic energy because the car is not moving. As the car begins its journey down the slope, the kinetic energy increases because the car is moving faster and faster. And potential energy decreases. At the bottom of the slope, the car has minimum potential energy because gravity cannot pull it down anymore. And maximum kinetic energy at that point. The car continues its journey upward where it gains potential energy and loses kinetic energy. At the top of the next crest, the cycle of transforming potential energy to kinetic energy begins again.
Energy is always conserved between potential and kinetic energy. Remember that some of that kinetic energy is converted to thermal energy, heat, due to friction along the track, as occurs with so many machines, including roller coasters. Let's think of a pendulum system. And a stop clock. Now we will count the time it takes to complete 10 oscillations. Swing the bob to one side and leave it. Uh, a pendulum system consists of a mass hanging from a long cord attached to a pivot point, such as a clock pendulum arm, a swinging wrecking ball, or child on a playground swing. Uh, think about that. Imagine a pendulum mass is held upward to one side with a gravitational potential energy of 100 joules. At that beginning elevated position, the pendulum system has the greatest potential energy while kinetic energy is zero joules. Uh, the mass is present, uh, but it's not moving, right? When the mass is released and begins to move faster, it gains kinetic energy and loses potential energy. At the bottom of the swing, kinetic energy is at its maximum, at 100 joules. And potential energy is zero joules because gravity cannot pull the pendulum down any farther. So there is no more gravitational potential energy. The pendulum continues to swing, so the cycle of energy transformation continues until air resistance and friction on the pivot point slow the system to a stop. Now, there is a formula to calculate the GPE or gravitational potential energy of an object. It is PE equals MGH, where M is the mass, G is gravitational acceleration on Earth, and H is height. Now the value of G is a constant here on Earth. It's 9.8 meters per second squared. It is an acceleration. Therefore, potential energy depends on mass and height. Let's do some problems where we would have to calculate the potential energy of the given object. An apple has a mass of two kilograms. It is three meters above ground. What is its potential energy? When we start the problem, we need to remember our formula for potential energy. PE, or U, equals MGH. The M mass is 2 kilograms. The gravitational acceleration on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height is 3 meters. If we plug all three of those values into the formula, we'll arrive at our answer. refrigerator is 10 meters above ground. It has a mass of 12 kilograms. What is its potential energy? I love refrigerators. Once again, we'll need our formula for potential energy because this problem is asking us for the potential energy of the refrigerator. So if we have our formula, PE equals MGH, we have our mass, it's 12 kilograms. We have our height, it's 10 meters. The acceleration of gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. When you plug all that in, whether using a calculator or just using your good old brain, you'll be able to figure it out smoothly. I love refrigerators. The potential energy of an apple is six joules. The apple is three meters high. What is the mass of the apple? Now this problem is switching things up a bit. They're giving us the potential energy and the height and they're asking us for the mass. 
we can still solve this problem with the same formula, PE equals MGH. We're just going to plug in what they gave us and solve for the variable. In this case, the variable is M, the mass. We are trying to figure that out. We're solving for the mass. So we'll plug six joules into our potential energy value. Uh, we'll plug three into the height and 9.8 meters per second squared into G for gravity. When you plug all that in and you solve properly using the correct mathematical variations, you'll find your answer. At what height is an object that has a mass of 50 kilograms if its GPE is 9,800 joules? One, two, two three. three. Once again, we can solve this problem by utilizing the information they gave us. They already gave us the potential energy. We are solving for the height. Our mass is 50 kilograms. We don't know what our height is, but we know that our potential energy is 9,800 joules. If we plug that information into the formula and solve for the variable, which will be the height, we will successfully have our answer. Well, that was a lot. We sure hope you enjoyed this extensive episode of The Last Science Show where we talked about potential energy. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share for more videos. We'll see you next time. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good science.